greatness always comes in seemingly unlikely packages, like the acorn seed that grows to a mighty oak tree, or the tiny mustard seed that becomes one of the greatest among trees when planted. So is a man that carries the seed of greatness in him. He may not look it, but his bold and confident steps of today are the foreshadow of what lays ahead. In the words of John Milton, the childhood shows the man as morning shows the day. I got saved at the age of 15 while in high school. We had a teacher from a missionary organization, Sudan Interior Mission, who was instrumental to my salvation. She was one Betty Lasher, who taught us Christian religious knowledge. Miss Lasher noticed that I was very active in the Bible classes, but perceived that I needed the experience of salvation. But Betty Lasher loved me into being born again. She would call me after classes, saying, David, come over here. How are you doing? Are you fine? How are you finding your classes? Then she would say, You know, David, you need a definite experience of salvation, right? Good works won't take you to heaven. She would give me pieces of tracks, literatures, pictures, and anything just to get my attention. Finally, with love and patience, Betty Lasher introduced me to Christ the 19th of February, 1969. I gave my life to Christ and became a child of God. Immediately, I could feel the new life surge through me. I embarked on a three-day mission to Imo Hill in Elisha, studying the book of Ezekiel, with craving to access the unction of the prophet Ezekiel. It was a unique experience for me. The first day I arrived at the mountain, it was a serpent that welcomed me. As it fell before me, I smiled that it must be the Garden of Eden. When I was not about to be scared by the serpent, the sky turned blue, rain fell heavily and I was drenched. After the rain from heaven fell, the rain from the trees started falling. It was piercing like a needle, but I was full of joy and expectation. I was reading the book of Ezekiel with a torchlight, prayed, read and sang. The following day, the sunshine came and dried the water off my body and clothes. On the third day, as I was winding up, God said to me, Behold, I have touched your tongue with a coal of fire, and from henceforth, as you see it, you will see it. That was when God placed authority on my tongue. While I was getting set to return to school one day in 1973, a man came visiting my uncle, an area education officer. The man asked if I could take up a teaching job to relieve a teacher who had gone on maternity leave. I quickly jumped at the opportunity because every open door for evangelism excited me. I was just about to spend 70 days on the relief duty in a village called Dumaji, Shunga local government area of Kwara State. When I got to my hut, I knelt down to pray, saying to God, Lord, let me never leave this village the way I met it. Lord, put your name in this village. 
we began to hold fellowships at the entrance porch of the compound where we lived. Nupe was the language of the people and my new friend Abraham spoke it very well. So I became the preacher and he the interpreter. Weekly, the number of worshippers grew. We engaged in strategic evangelism, visiting the parents of the students to pray for them at about the same time they would have been going to the mosque. Because teachers were held in high esteem then, every scheduled appointment in their homes was considered an honor and was treated with such respect and expectation. That was how we literally led the whole village to Christ. On the 72nd day, which was my last Sunday in the village, the church was packed full with the village folks. Then, something prophetic happened. One of the elderly men in the church was asked to present a farewell gift to me on behalf of the church. He stood up and said, We have heard that wherever the church gets to, civilization gets there too. Thank you for bringing civilization to our village. He had a bush lamp, a lantern in his hand. He held it out to me and said, Silver and gold we have not, but we give you this lamp. Let this light you brought to our village shine round the world. He then presented the lamp to me, a prophetic symbol indeed. I had a most awesome encounter, which I still consider the greatest discovery of my life. As I read the book, The Man God Uses, Oswald J. Smith. One scripture exploded in my spirit, and that was Matthew 6.33. I had the Holy Ghost interpretation of the scripture, and that truth has controlled my life till date. The Spirit of God said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and its fullness, and all other things men are dying to get, shall be added unto you. What? Seek one thing and get everything? It got such a hold of me that I entered into a covenant which I titled Sailing Under Sealed Orders, that is, sealed today and forever. I got my wife, who I was in courtship with at the time, to sign the document the following day, Monday, 13th September, 1976. What a master key for us, and what a blessing. The hour has come to liberate the world from all oppressions of the devil through the preaching of the word of faith and I am sending you to undertake this task. Having received the call to the ministry in 1981, precisely May 1st and 2nd, immediately he began to share the vision with people he believed that are like mine. When this vision was delivered to God's servant, one of the first things that he did was to get a group of people and we were all usually there in what was then called the power house. The main thing we were doing at that time was prayer. Praying and praying and praying for about 26 months before the ministry was commissioned. In preparation for entry into full-time ministry, God spoke to his servant. 
I will not have you go like others have gone. I will have hands laid on you so you can be filled with the spirit of wisdom. Today in the year 2021, 40 years later, there is a tangible, impactful and physical manifestation of the liberation mandate in at least five continents of the world. The word of faith preached is being confirmed across the nations of the earth with signs, wonders and life-changing testimonies of God's grace and glory. Today, 40 years on, God is still opening new chapters in the journey of this great commission. He keeps opening new chapters. He keeps opening new chapters. For instance, he will build a church that sees 50,000 at the base of this ministry. He did. And then there was a clean noggin of the Holy Spirit. He wants to do something else. Amen. And now we are embarking on a 100,000 sea sanctuary. When he said it will be 50,000, you will think that he has put a ceiling of 50,000 people only in the church. Now he filled it once, he filled it twice, he filled it three times. So uh, it's a destiny of no limits. There, is, there are no ceilings on the destiny of the believer. There are no ceilings. People don't know that. Year in, year out, having witnessed the groundbreaking and subsequent commissioning of signature projects across the length and breadth of Nigeria, Africa, and the world at large, we are about to see the unveiling of the Legacy Project, the 100,000-seat capacity sanctuary, the Ark. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our sight. To him alone be all the glory.